Lesotho residents donate 1,000 kilos of corn and millets to reciprocate the love they received from Tsiji. We learn of the disaster prevention plans in place for residents of Kaohsiung's Taoyuan districts. Welcome to Dar Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. First up in the landlocked country of Lesotho, more than 40% of the population here lives below the poverty line. However, having received Tiji's help since 2005, community volunteers in Machache wrote a letter of thanks to Tiji, stating that they would like to donate nearly 1,000 kilos of corn and millet to the Buddhist NGO. Lesotho is a landlocked country situated inside of South Africa. Here, some 40% of the population lives below the poverty line. At Tiji Foundation's winter aid distribution in 2005, rice and corn flour from Taiwan arrived in the community of Machache by the truckload. This year, residents are returning the love given years ago. Volunteers in Machache wrote a letter to Tiji stating that residents would like to join the 8020 campaign to reciprocate the love they once received. Eight villages donated a total of nearly 1,000 kilos of corn and millet. <laughs> Upon arriving at the village, Tiji volunteers received a warm welcome from locals. The residents guaranteed us that they have enough for themselves and will not starve. They even hope to have more to donate to those in greater need. Community volunteers also managed to donate 30 US dollars to help turn the food donated into flour. Knowing that the villagers don't earn more than one US dollar a day, city volunteers are moved by their efforts. <laughs> Though residents still live in poverty and face droughts at times, they nonetheless remain optimistic and are grateful for any help given. Moving to Malaysia at the Tsiji Sarambang Liaison Office, Tsiji volunteers who flew to Beijing to tend to the family members of the missing passengers on board the MH370 were invited to share their experiences with their fellow volunteers at the monthly gathering. There is a drive that keeps pushing me to help these family members. I hope they can pull themselves together and remain strong. We need to face the reality with Master Zheng Yan's Dharma. The Master told us how to deal with the impermanence of life with six perfections. Despite the chaotic situation, we need to keep ourselves in a calm and peaceful state of mind. Earlier this week, the Prime Minister of Malaysia said at a press conference that the current evidence shows the whereabouts of the missing plane to be in the Southern Indian Ocean. This conclusion was made by examining the communication the plane had with satellites with what is called the Doppler effect. Let's find out more in our next report. Without identifying any wreckage matching Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, the Malaysian government declared the plane's last known location somewhere in the South Indian Ocean, thanks to information gleaned from satellites and advanced math. Uh, if the system is, uh, is, is powered up and switched on, yes, it will log on to one of our satellites, as we call it, register with our network and will be capable of uh, providing any of the communications that are possible. All we would simply know is the uh, relative position of the aircraft to the satellite and the fact that the system is, uh, is powered up and capable of communicating some form of uh, content data or, or voice traffic. Which means, even if the missing plane's communication box was turned off, the Immersat satellites were able to pick up several communication pings emitted by the plane, thus helping experts calculate the general flight path of the plane. But to pinpoint a more specific area, the Doppler effect was the key. 
When two objects approach each other, then the frequency will increase. When the frequency decreases, that's when the objects are moving away from each other. The Doppler effect is the increase in frequency of the sound of an approaching object as it moves towards another object. And when moving away from that object, the corresponding decrease in frequency. When applied to the missing airplane, these waves help plot the plane's direction and point to its location. In the process of locating an object, the pulse or wave it emits has already happened, and if the frequency doesn't increase or decrease, then it would be hard to determine if the object is moving away or towards you. Using satellite positioning and physics, the mystery surrounding flight MH370 is one step closer to being solved, as now officials have a clear direction for their search. In the Philippines, to continue its affinity with Tacloban residents following Typhoon Haiyan, the City Philippines chapter decided to broadcast programs of Dai TV via the late cable network. On March 21st, the service officially began, giving local residents the spiritual sustenance needed to rebuild their lives. <laughs> Following Typhoon Haiyan, Philippines Tsuji volunteers delivered aid supplies to Tacloban on behalf of Tsuji volunteers worldwide. Now the ITV programs also set food in the region and have become local residents' favorite pastime. The background of Dai drama is set in early days. The meanings behind those stories are very positive and educational. To continue its affinity with Tacloban residents, director of the Tsuji Philippines chapter signed a memorandum of agreement with the Leyte Cable Network to introduce Dai TV programs to the region. On March 21, 2014, Dai TV programs, including Wisdom at Dawn, Dai Drama and Dai News in Chinese and English, began to broadcast in Tacloban. With Tsuji Foundation, they will help us fed a good programming that will encourage us to have more wisdom and to have the right perspective in order to us to become a better person. Through global broadcast, Tsuji's love and compassion will continue to enlighten all corners of the world. In Indonesia's East Java, it has been more than a month since the volcano at Mount Kalut erupted. To help those affected by the disaster, Batam Tsuji volunteers visited a local shopping mall and a traditional market to canvas for donations. At the traditional market, volunteers encountered a man who, despite living in poverty, still insisted on donating his love. Since the volcanic eruption at Kalu in East Java in February, this area has been covered in ash, affecting many residents' livelihood. Thankfully, a group of blue and white angels decided to reach out with a helping hand. All of us hope to contribute our share and do good deeds. With the goal of helping those affected by the disaster, more than 10 volunteers split into teams to canvas for donations at the local shopping mall. Although rejected were ignored by many, volunteers are not discouraged and still insist on greeting everyone with a smile. They, um some people walked right by, but some welcomed us. We're very thankful to those that donated their love. We will help those in greater need with this money. Other than canvassing for donations in shopping malls, volunteers also visited a traditional market. Despite living in poverty, this man kindly donated the change in his bucket to help those in greater need. Touched by his gesture, many in the market decided to follow suit. I feel at ease knowing that I have the ability to give. I'm very happy to contribute my share and help the less fortunate. Regardless of being rich or poor, everyone can become a giver that changes another's life forever.
following Typhoon Marakot in 2009, from central governments to local officials around the island, all began to take disaster prevention seriously. Kaohsiung's Taoyuan District is one good example, as the district office now has disaster contingency plans in place for all of its eight boroughs. In addition to planning out escape routes and emergency shelters, each borough has also been equipped with satellite phones, citizens' band radios, and sufficient food to weather even the most dire emergencies. Here in Kaohsiung's Taoyuan district, the Sha'alua tribe comes together once a year to celebrate Takiaru. Also on site are members from the local fire department educating the public on disaster prevention. Just another sign of how serious such measures are being taken following Typhoon Morakot in 2009. Two years after Typhoon Morakot, we received a set of disaster contingency plans from the central government with orders to put them into place. The shelter in Kaohsiung Borough is at the Jiansan Activity Center, and for Taoyuan Borough, it is an elementary school. Here in Taoyuan, response centers, emergency shelters, and even areas that might see debris flow are all clearly marked on planning maps. Just as important is the equipment, which is checked regularly. Each borough and township office, as well as emergency response providers, are required to keep their CB radios on and working 24 hours a day. Each office is also provided with two satellite phones that can be used when phone lines are down. Each borough gets one, as does the borough head and township office, so all together we have nine. When landlines, CBs and cell phones are down, we then will use these. The satellite phones are tested at least twice a month. As for the equipment and supplies at the emergency shelter, they are checked and restocked before flood season, which starts in late April. This is our storage room. Here we have dry noodles, canned food, instant meals, and up here we have sleeping bags. The food has to be non-perishable, and the amount to be stored is also detailed in the prevention plans. At least three weeks. Of course, that is not for every resident, but for those who are living in the more dangerous areas. Different areas, of course, have different response measures in place. Regarding disaster contingency and response, you have to look at the area. For example, communities living on mountain slopes will face a greater danger of debris flow or landslides. The eight boroughs in Taoyuan District also take turns in holding annual mudslide response drills. Despite the preparation, the most important thing is getting the public actively involved in these disaster prevention plans. Only then will they be effective in reducing loss of life and property when a disaster does strike. According to Yunlin County's education department, nearly 60,000 students in the county are using broken and therefore unsuitable desks and chairs. However, due to a lack of funding, schools have been unable to purchase replacements. As an answer, the Yunlin County government set up a program in which all of its 186 schools recycle and reuse second-hand desks and chairs from other cities and counties. Do, do it. Yeah. A student draws on a piece of paper. However, before the line is complete, the paper has ripped. Other than this, many students are also sitting on chairs that have been repaired countless times. Some students don't even have the place to put their belongings. 
。呃，同学可以放东西。呃、不行放。少了一个板。哎、呃，对。Desks and chairs that have been used for five years in schools can be replaced. However, many schools outside of Taiwan's major cities don't have the funding to do so. When we find chairs and desks that are unstable, we can only ask our handyman to fix them. I feel really bad for our students. Due to a lack of funding, we don't have the ability to replace all desks and chairs that are in bad shape. Yeah, to do a, uh, Taiwan part, ha, to, all, all, do a refresh. These chairs have missing parts. Right now, I'm going to tear them apart and fix them. Stacks of tables and chairs. These are the unused ones donated by schools in Taipei City. The glue isn't sticking anymore. That's why this moves. After we fix it, it will be good as new. Although these desks and chairs are secondhand, most of them are still in good shape compared to the ones currently used by students in Yunlin County. Even though we are using second-hand items, most of them are still in good shape. We can give these items a new lease on life and teach our children the importance of cherishing resources. Currently, 186 schools in Yunlin County have set up a program to recycle and reuse second-hand school tables and chairs. Through this program, students have learned to cherish resources. In a way, we are passing on a correct environmental message to our students. If everyone only thinks about purchasing new things, then we end up with a lot of waste. With the establishment of the program, chairs and desks are not only given a second lease on life, but also act as an educational tool to help students realize the importance of cherishing resources. The Tsuji Japan chapter recently organized a gathering for students of its Chinese class to showcase their achievements in Chinese learning, as well to help the local Chinese community feel more comfortable when seeing a doctor. Japan team are invited bilingual doctors to bridge the language barrier for patients in need. Let's take a look. Here at the Tsuji Japan chapter, team are doctors are providing various medical services for local residents. Sometimes I can't express how I feel clearly in Japanese. If the doctors can understand Chinese, I will be more at ease. To help local residents, especially overseas Chinese, bridge the language barrier when seeing a doctor, Japan team are invited seven doctors who can communicate in Chinese to serve. Today we have plenty of time, so take your time in telling me your health problems. No matter what problems you have, I will do my best to help. Though Japan already has a comprehensive system of preventative medicine, local city volunteers still want to do their part to safeguard the health of local residents. I was worried because I didn't know how to persuade Tima doctors to come to help out as there are still so many patients in need. I am not sure if our contributions can make a difference. However, we as doctors still can do our part to help the needy. Thanks to Tima's medical services, the health of these local residents is assured. Meanwhile, the Tsuji Japan chapter organized a gathering for students of its Chinese class. Seeing their children's Chinese fluency improving day by day, parents and relatives abroad are as proud as can be. Every week, her grandfather makes a call from Taiwan to talk to her. Before, she didn't like to talk to her grandpa. But now, she not only shares what she learns at school, but also sings to him. On the phone, he repeats whatever he learned at school and then says goodbye to his grandpa. He's just three, so I think he's doing well. His grandpa is happy to talk to him. Students at the elementary level share their paintings and hopes with audience members. 
I want to be a pediatrician and cure all sick children. With a loving environment provided by the Tsuji Japan chapter, parents and their children come together to not only form stronger family bonds, but also learn of Tsuji's humanistic values. In the recent years, it has been proven that breastfeeding offers more benefits to both newborns and mothers. However, in Taiwan, baby formula manufacturers have been making exaggerated claims of how formula can replicate or even exceed the benefits of drinking breast milk. In our next report, we learn the benefits of breast milk as well as what the government is doing to clamp down on such false advertising. As many parents in Taiwan purchase supplements to help their children grow up strong and healthy, with a variety of baby products claiming unfunded benefits, the Ministry of Health and Welfare has decided that food products for babies under one may now only display a list of ingredients. The name of the product, its weight, content and the list of additives, as well as price. Apart from these, nothing else can be listed or claimed on the packaging. In addition, advertisements cannot state any medical or non-proven benefits to influence consumers. You definitely cannot say that milk powder has the same nutritional content as breast milk. Free trial packs will also be prohibited to ensure consumers are not affected by promotional strategies. The new regulations are set to take place in September and the government reminds the general public to seek advice from a nutritionist before making a purchase. The World Health Organization states that breast milk is the most nutritional choice for infants. However, many formula manufacturers now claim their products offer better nutritional intake. All milk powder is made trying to copy the nutrition that is found in breast milk, and copies will never be as good as the original. Breast milk is mainly made up of protein, fat, sugar, calcium, iron and the many minerals needed by the human body. Though these nutrients can be found in man-made additives, there are some elements which only exist in breast milk. Infant formula cannot replace breast milk because breast milk contains immunoglobulin and antibodies, which all enhances the baby's immune system and reduces the possibility of infection. As breastfeeding is considered the healthiest choice and formulas often cannot be easily absorbed, doctors suggest additional supplements for babies drinking formula. A baby drinking formula will need to take other formulas or food to ensure they are getting enough iron and calcium. If mothers are not able to produce enough breast milk and must use milk powder, doctors also remind them not to mix the two together and to use formula every second meal only. We go to China at the end of the show at the 22nd China International Clothing and Accessories Fair held from March 26th to 29th in Beijing. The green product presented by Dye Technology successfully caught the attention of many fair goers. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.